Um, this is a passage from Eric Hobsbawm's uh, book, The Age of Revolution. Uh, and I just wanted to read uh, read this passage because it's interesting. And then I'm going to read some more passages in the future from this book as well. As you know, uh, Eric Hobsbawm is a British um, was a British Marxist. Uh, Jewish Marxist uh, historian and probably one of the greatest, uh, if not the greatest, uh, historian of the 19th century which Britain has uh, produced. In his trilogy, The Age of Revolution, The Age of Capital and The Age of Empire, uh, the must reading for anybody who is interested in capitalism. So this is his... Uh, He's talking about Islam and he's comparing the expansion of Islam in Africa. It's comparing with uh, almost non-expansion of Christianity at that time, even though it was backed by the empire and missionary uh, money and resources. But that's not the main thing which I want to focus on in this paragraph. So I'll just read it from here. As against this Islam as against Christianity, that is, was continuing continuing the, that silent, piecemeal and irreversible expansion unbacked by organized missionary endeavor or forcible conversion, which is so characteristic of that religion. It expanded both uh, eastwards in Indonesia and northwestern China and westwards uh, from, from the Sudan towards Senegal and to a much smaller extent from the shores of the Indian Ocean inland. He's talking about the middle of uh, 19th century, around 1840. When traditional societies change something so fundamental as their religion, it is clear that they must be facing major new problems, and which they can't solve from their inner resources alone. The Muslim traders, who virtually monopolized the commerce of inner Africa with the outside world and multiplied with it, helped to bring Islam to the notice of new peoples. The slave trade, which broke down communal life, made it attractive that uh, Islam was made attractive by the crisis which the society was facing through slave trade which Europeans were engaging in. The slave trade which broke down communal life made it attractive for Islam is a powerful means for reintegrating social structures. For Islam is a powerful means of reintegrating social structure. At the same time the Mohammedan religion, they used to call Islam Mohammedan religion. Obviously Muslims don't call it because Islam is nothing, it's not an invention of Muhammad, it's, a, it's a more of, of a worldview which is related to the prophets, um, ultimately to Abraham. Um, anyway, so, but it was used in olden times uh, and he's using that, olden time meaning that in 19th century. Um, at the same time, the Mohammedan religion appealed to the semi-feudal and military societies of the Sudan and its sense of independence, uh, militancy and superiority made it a useful counterweight to slavery. So at the same time, the Mohammedan religion appealed to the semi-feudal and military societies of the Sudan and its sense of independence, that is Islam's sense of independence, militancy, and superiority made it a useful counterweight to slavery. Muslim Negroes made bad slaves. Muslim Negroes made bad slaves. The Hossa and other Sudanese who had been uh, imported to Bahia, Brazil, revolted nine times between 1807 and the Great Rising of 1835 until in effect, they were mostly killed or deported back to Africa. Uh, let me do it. Muslim Negroes made bad slaves. The Hosa 
and other Hossa and other Sudanese who had been imported to um, Bahia, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, Bahia, Brazil, revolted nine times between 1807 and the Great Rising of 1835 until, in effect, they were mostly killed or deported back to Africa. The slavers learned to avoid imports from these areas, which had only recently been opened to the trade. Um, so I thought this was interesting. He get to the heart of uh, Islam in a sense. Uh, okay, thank you.